Before everyone was sporting the signature white earplugs, before ignorant PC users started to look out of the corner of their eye at the lusciously glossy new MacBooks, and long before everyone was plugging iPhones into their Windows OS, there was Sabine Mehmood. Having self-professedly fallen in love with the Mac at the tender age of 16, Sabine, apart from other contributions, perhaps has a distinction of fusing the realms of creativity and technology in a uniquely Pakistani way. Founder of intellectual and technology hub T2F, director of Peace Niche and COO of Bits, Sabine shares with us her journey of the last 20 years. I did my computer science O level at Solutions Unlimited. That's where I met my first Mac, then I bought a Mac, and I just knew somehow that I would be doing something in my career that would revolve around this computer. When I went off to college, I got this desktop publishing experience I learned on my own. So got into graphic design and, and a lot of observation really of that whole interface and operating system. When I came back from college, I joined Solutions Unlimited and Enabling Technologies, which is Pakistan's first uh, multimedia company, which uh, Zaheed Kidbai founded. He also founded Solutions Unlimited. At Enabling Technologies, we worked on Pakistan's first CD-ROM, which was for IBM. And then we did uh, stuff for ABN AMRO, uh, uh, 50 years of art in Pakistan. So, so I learned how to do multimedia programming on the job. So content writing, graphic design, multimedia programming, all of that I learned there. Exciting web stuff was happening and I really felt that there was a great opportunity to help local companies do great things on the internet. So BITS came about in 2000. I was raised in a very nurturing environment. I was trusted. I was doing uh, my computer science O level. These subjects are structured so bad. You just have to pick things and sometimes you just have this one choice. And I, ha I started having huge problems with the teacher. And my mother used to teach at the school back then. And she mentioned to me that there was this company that used to supply computers to the school. And why don't I speak to them and see if I could do something in the summer. I didn't know that I had a great love for computers then. And we were learning on BBC microcomputers at that time. So I called up Solutions Unlimited was the company and I went there and I started doing, studying with an instructor there. And he really, sort of, he was inspiring and I discovered this great love for computing there. There were all these Mac classes lying around. And I just saw that machine and I just fell in love. That is my first Mac. Prior to that, I'd, I'd done a little logo programming course and I had some Aquarius computer. And then I just saved up money and for a whole year and then I got this Mac Plus. This was an 8 megahertz machine with no hard drive and a single floppy drive. This is what changed my life. I was 16, still in school. Yeah, I guess it was pretty odd. Most people didn't have computers. <laughs> NetSoul, a Pakistani IT company, has signed a lucrative contract to supply their NetSoul financial suite products to North American and Mexican businesses. Hats off to NetSoul for exporting a highly specialized value-added product. This type of export is highly beneficial for the economy. The project will enable NetSoul to sell their software to more than 160 IT companies across North and Central America. More deals will be brokered with NetSoul, including some with major Chinese banks and other subsidiary firms. This will cement NetSoul's reputation as a global IT player. Well done. Solutions Unlimited uh, is where I used to keep going and then I went off to Kanet College in Lahore but I used to keep coming back and going straight to that office. I did uh, literature, journalism and philosophy but I lugged my Mac with me and then I was exploring on my own. So those were the days of discovering Pink Floyd and discovering the Mac and <laughs> dark room. This was one of the gifts that the lady at Apple gave me and I used to have these fantasies about not needing the human race. It was just a happy time of discovery. Most of what I know today I learned in those days. By then I had a Mac SE which was still one of those 9 inch all-in-one computers and I used to lug that around like a laptop and they wouldn't let me bring my computer. There was no logical reason. I used to call them from Karachi and beg and plead and say that you know I can't live without, I can't function without this thing 
and so they actually made me pay extra money for electricity. So I used to pay them 140 rupees extra every month. It, it was great learning as well because I used to do the desktop publishing for the Kinnaid College magazine. While all the girls would rush off for whatever shopping boyfriend table, I used to rush to various printers and I'd found an Apple dealership there. So I used to go there and get my laser printouts and you know learn about fixing jaggies and things like that. <laughs> So I really learned a lot more out on the streets than I did in college. Every time I'd come back to Karachi, straight from the airport I'd go to the office. I was taught how to solder and how to add RAM to machines and they were not that easy to open back then. I guess I must have been fascinated by programming etc because that logo course I did was really fantastic. And I don't know if you're familiar with the logo language that Seymour Papert invented. And then I had this great passion to run Solutions Unlimited for a while, which was a, a Mac dealership. So we were doing sales and technical support and, and repairs. And all the guys hated me. And then, you know, this whole enabling technologies thing started, you know, where I met people like Adish Kawasji and Tina Sani, etc. because these were all Zach's clients. They all had Macs back in those days. And so it was amazing that they'd have a problem and one would go over to fix the computer, but then you'd stay and then, you know, you'd you'd get to talk to these people and learn stuff and in other online social media activists had rallied along with the Pakistan cricket team as they won the 2020 World Cup the Pakistani Twitter community had their own victory as the hashtag Pak cricket was featured as the fourth most talked about topic across millions of users on Twitter the latest intention of hashtag Pakistan is to change the conversation of the world towards Pakistan on Twitter and feature ourselves as the most talked about topic, trending topic for that day.